Hello, I am your host Chloe Brewster and welcome to The Creative Comeback, a love affair with the arts and podcast form. I talk to creators from all different walks of life, discussing the ups and downs of being a creative in modern society, delving into the nitty gritty of the arts industries. Today on The Creative Comeback, I chatted to Tom Nibbs about the truth behind being a photographer. Having sold himself as a talented photographer, Tom shares his stunning imagery and upcoming projects with his audience on Instagram. Today we discuss the future of his brand, Tom K Visuals. Perfect. So my first question for you is, why did you choose photography as a career? Um, I kind of, I fell into it, to be honest. I didn't, um, I was, I did media at college. I wanted to do journalism. um, And I... There was a there was an app uh oh, called, so there was a project where you had to edit videos and I was like, Oh, I'll give this a go. And I loved it. I was literally like, I could proper express myself through this and I had so many cool ideas that I wanted to do. Obviously I was awful at it at the time. Um and I was like, Yeah, I, I want to take this further. I was at college for like six months, um, hated it, I hated the written assignments, it was naff. Um, so I got an apprenticeship in a video editing. I was really lucky to get it because I literally come up on Indeed. Um, and I was there for two and a half years, uh, learning everything about uh, video editing. And I did an apprenticeship in digital marketing alongside it, which was probably one of the best things I've done. Um, and I only, I only did videos um, to start with. And then... I actually got kind of annoyed when people called me a photographer because I didn't do, I didn't do photos at all. And I was like, that's not what I'm doing. Um, and then I'd say like year, year, year and a half ago, I just, I was like, almost saw a gap where people in this area weren't doing a lot of photo shoots. I saw it in London and Manchester. And I was like, no one down South is really doing it. Um, so I was like, I'm just going to chuck myself in it. Use what I know about video. I had absolutely no idea about photography. And uh, yeah, I probably prefer doing photography now more than I do videos. Um, so yeah hopefully that answers that question <laughs> no, I know what you mean it's like I think I sort of had the same thing um <clears throat> I sort of did I did media at college didn't really like it did textiles yes really liked it, and then ended up like two weeks before the deadline of joining uni just going um I'm just gonna do this and picked a fashion course that I thought I liked the sound of and now I'm like oh this is exactly what I wanted to do but I never would have known if you don't just like yeah yeah exactly exactly unless you just fell into it so so where do you get your inspiration from is it like around you or or um i'd say a lot of uh, other creators a lot of other photographers inspire me when i see their work and i feel like how do they do that and then that inspires me to go out and a lot of it is just having the mindset of creating because I, i could walk through a door and be like and see a sick bit of lighting or something and i'll be like that's insane. Like, I want to do something along the lines of this, like with the door, the light coming through or something like that. Um, so I think just always being switched. I don't know. Cause that doesn't inspire me. I don't know the, um, yeah, probably just everything. Like when you're in that mindset, everything does, like everything inspires you going out, sunset, lighting, uh, sunrises, clouds, like anything essentially. Yeah. I know what you mean. Sometimes I'll just be like, sat watching tv and i'd be like oh my god it's so cool i'm just gonna randomly and then you get that urge yeah yeah yeah. then you just get that sun urge oh i'm gonna i'm gonna create something or i'm gonna take that picture or whatever it may be you have to like act on it because if you don't act on it it yeah yeah exactly mind yeah exactly 100 percent uh it definitely can't like switch off when you're when you do creative things because it's all the time (laughs) it's 24 7 i I, like that's the one thing i say to everyone is 24 7 your mind does not switch off you could be laying in bed for bed and you'll just get like a sudden, oh my God, I need to do this. Yeah, um, that's normally when I get, get my ideas, I'll literally be like, right, I'm so tired, get into bed, and then I'll just start overthinking. I'll be like, yeah. why have I never thought of this before? And then I have to yeah, literally. about it. Literally. It's, yeah. like a, it's like a door just opens up, and you just, like, with a beam of light, and you just got to walk through it. I'm sure that most of it comes from being, like, delirious, and <laughs> it's probably not. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, Sleep deprived. <laughs> do you feel like you're supported as a creative mentally and like financially because obviously in the last sort of year and a bit the government haven't made it easy to get funding when you've not been able to do sort of what you do no yeah I, it's difficult because from a from a business side of things i wasn't i hadn't been a business long enough to get financial support from the government 
So, but also I was lucky enough that I was working part time at my old employer, so I was still getting income from them. But yeah, for, for, it wasn't it wasn't obvious. It wasn't like oh here's his support. You really had to like find it, or you had to rely on other businesses. Like uh, for me, um, that gap when lockdown got lifted in the summer, I had tons of nurseries wanting promotional videos because people can come in, in September. So they were my support, if I'm honest. Like they, they were my income um, through that two or three month period. Um, so yeah, I, I, I personally relied on other businesses that were in a good position that could help me out. And I just put myself forward to them and say, look, this is what I can do for you. And then it was just a chain effect because then once someone knew them, someone knew someone else. So. Yeah, definitely. I was talking with someone the other day about um, the funding and we were just saying like, there was always sort, sort of seemed like there's something that stopped you from getting it, whether you hadn't been self-employed long enough, yeah. you lived in the wrong area. Like, um, I remember even just with uni, I applied for something over the summer and they were like, oh yes, yeah, so you meet all the requirements, but because of the area that you live in, too many people go to university. So not even like my university, but like it's too many people in the area go to university and have higher education. Yeah. So you don't meet our uh, um guidelines anymore that's so bad. i'm like that, that's not even like personal to you that's you that's something you can't control do you know what i mean exactly and it's like they're telling you yeah to be fair you meet you're the ideal person to get it like, sorry we're not going to give it to you but you can't <laughs> honestly it's just shambles and i think it's one of those and it sort of goes hand in hand with like the mental support if you're not supported financially it's sort of like how are you supposed to be mentally supported as well yeah exactly 100% hundred percent so what does photography mean to you oh that's a what does photography mean to me um in the non-deepest form um it gives you a reason to get out of bed in the morning that is probably the biggest thing for me is every everyone on this planet is looking for something to get up in the morning and do like and achieve and that is probably what photography and photography is to me is i'll wake up in the bed in the morning going i want to make something or i've got this to do i've got that to do and without it i actually have no idea what i'll do <laughs> like i have absolutely no idea what i'll do yeah definitely i know what you mean just be there like oh, what do i do today i've got nothing yeah yeah literally like I, and, and some people are like that some people haven't found their like i, I call it a why but yeah people haven't found that out of bed and i'm lucky well, I say lucky, I, I don't really call it luck because I put so many hours into this. Um, but yeah, I, that, that's probably what it means is getting out of bed in the morning. Definitely. So do you think that working in a creative industry is an unskilled job? Or do you think <laughs> that, like, sort of the government and other people like to play this narrative and belittle it and make it out like it's not a big thing? The bane of my life is people don't understand the time that goes into anything like anything creative it, when you make anything whether it be clothes uh videos photos jewelry whatever it may be the time that goes into it and when people belittle it and question why for me it's prices why people go why is it that much and i think like i understand people are curious about where their money's going but when you explain it and they still don't understand it i think like pe people don't understand the the time for one to make the product but then it's the time learning how to make the product. Like the 10,000 hour rule really is 100% true. Like you have to spend at least 10,000 hours on something to become that good at it. And people don't realize that. People don't realize the, the steps you've taken to get to the point you are now. And it, oh my God, it winds me up more than anything. Oh, I can't. <laughs> and it's like going back to what you said earlier on there, you never, it never ends. You never switch off. Like people yeah. don't realize that you're constantly like, you don't just leave the office and and stop like a lot of jobs you come no. up and you're done. Like if someone messages you at like three a.m. in the morning, if you're awake, you're like, oh, I just don't know. It's like yeah. <laughs> it's, not it's not nine till five. It's it's literally all day, and especially when you're uh, when you have and you add a business to that, and you have like the invoicing and you're chasing them, and you're like that takes time. Like and thinking of the concepts, like it just it doesn't stop like you, you can be in the shower and you're, you're just thinking of ideas it's constantly just going around your head constantly it's it's quite draining at times but then i wouldn't want it like any other way yeah. and i feel like as well you get so many people like oh it's so easy you just have fun and i'm like yeah i do have fun but also 
it's not fun when you're like doing a photo shoot in like 30 degree heat all day <laughs> to eat. like sometimes it's not fun <laughs> or or it's the creative block like that is the worst thing ever like you 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 think oh i have all day to do this and you'll sit down and you have all these things you want to do and you just but your brain just doesn't do it. Like it just, you just have a complete creative block or, or you, you make something and then come back to it the next day and you think, why do I do it like this? But you have to go through that process to get to the end product you want it to be. Yeah. Um, it's, it just takes so much time, like so much time. Yeah. I feel like that's the thing as well. Like so often in our industries, you just burn out because you just put all your, all your heart into something and then by the time you yeah. get I'm out, I've <laughs> got nothing left. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking as well. Like when you have an idea that you're passionate about or you want to do and you can't quite achieve it because something's missing, we don't have the right equipment or you're not in the right location. It's soul destroying. Like it really is soul destroying. Like it's so, but that's again, it's part of the, part of the game of, of this, of the creative industry, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. And I think obviously the situation we're in now, like this whole project was supposed to be like me going to people's like workspace and photographing them in a studio or whatever. And then it's like, oh, you can't do that now. So you can't do that. You got to do it. And yeah, and I'm like, okay, now I've got to adapt it to be completely different. And I'm just like, and already I just see you just see how like it just changes and and like this is what people don't understand. Like it's never as straightforward as <laughs> it seems that it's going to be. Yeah, hundred percent. Literally hundred percent. That being said, do you feel like there's a pressure to always be creative? Like, do you feel like people always expect you to just be able to come up with ideas and be creative? Yes, I feel Instagram is is probably the worst for that. Um, And it links into comparing yourself with other people because you see, and I I could be good at it sometimes on your story, you want to be seen as busy. You want, especially from a business point of view, you want other people to look at you and go, oh, you've got a lot of stuff on because then it makes you a little bit more desirable instead of just being someone who's, you can just call them out the next day and they'll be there. Um, But that's probably the, the, biggest issue in the creative industry is instagram even though it has massive benefits it's it's bad in some aspects because of the comparing um because you, again you'll see people that are busy and you'll feel oh i'm not busy right now or you'll have a week where you're not busy and someone else is doing loads but that's just that's the way it goes and then but they won't show that they're not busy the next week do you know what i mean yeah. um so I, th- I think that's where the pressure comes from is seeing other people always creating so you feel like shit i should be creating but that's not always the case because it's call it over quantity so and i think speaking about sort of instagram the actual app itself is just a pain because you like (sighs) have to be consistent all the time like you have to post every day for people to see what you're posting and it's just like okay i don't have content for that (laughs) but that's that's interesting because i've i've posted every day since the 15th of january and I went through, I'd say, the middle of February. Bear in mind, on normal story views, I'm probably touching about 4.30 views. The, the second half of February, I was barely touching 100. Really? You think that drop, and some of my posts, uh, the reach, um, again, normally is around like seven to 800 reach. The tail end of February, three, 300, 400. Really? And I was posting every day. So that, this is the Instagram is a bane of my life because you spend so much time like planning out your grids, planning out your feed, what posts to put every day. Um, and when, when it's not necessarily because I'm, it's easy to say don't care about the likes, but you do because you want people to recognize it and you want people to see it. You're an idiot if you say you, you don't care because everyone does. It's the world we live in now. Yeah. Um, but when it's not reaching a certain amount of people, that's when it proper bugs me because I want people to see my work because that leads to opportunities that that leads to more business. And when the reach isn't getting there, especially this, it's, it's getting better now. It's on the up, but um, yeah, the, the tail end of February was carnage. I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I stop posting data? I was like, no, I'm going to let it win. Um, but I'm not, the, you, you say about the, the posting daily as well. I've tried to, um, I think I, I said the 15th of January, when I started, I'm going to try and do a whole year of posting every day wow that's because, a- because i have at the minute i have like 70 drafts because i do so many shoots and i do like five sets per shoot i have so much content like I have absolutely so much content and it'd be a waste if it didn't get like shown yeah um 
so yeah that's that's the challenge to myself over the next year whether I'll do it I have no idea but yeah I feel like the fact that like I know it really annoys me if I've got like for example like a thousand followers it is so annoying when you check how far is like how far the reach is and it's like 200 people I'm like well hang on a minute why are you not showing <laughs> this exactly yeah and and you'll get messages from people going i never saw this or oh or they'll comment it like two days later and you think how has that just popped up in your feed? unless you're stalking me how has that popped in your in your feed two days later do you know what i mean yeah exactly um, it's the biggest killer of like sort of 100 percent because it's just like what's the point? it is <laughs> instagram is 50 50 it's like 50 percent. it's amazing because you connect with all these different people and see people's work but then on a personal level it's awful because like say it's it's destroying it's it's demotivating Definitely. It's one of those that I have a love-hate relationship with it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm definitely in the, in the love side of it now, but last month I was absolutely hating it. <laughs> it's a journey. Yeah. So a bit of a big question here, but what do you think a world without the arts would look like? Ooh. It would just be nine to five. I think the, the only jobs that aren't nine to five are creative ones i might be wrong there might be more but i i feel like every other job like accounting and normal office jobs are just nine to five and you finish your day at five and like you said you you forget about it so i think with no arts i think it'd be everyone would be so structured and i think it'd become busier because people in the evenings would be more people out than people that are just like free roaming um so yeah, it'd be so much more boring. Like you think about like graffiti and people arts or buildings and you think the billboards of what people have created on there, like graphic design. Imagine like nothing and just be colourless, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, not not good. A very sad world. Yeah, I think it's really hard to think <laughs> well. Like how yeah, do you know like a world without something that you've sort of always known to be there? Yeah, that's, that's a, that is quite a crazy question because you can't like I can't fathom that like I can't actually like imagine yeah to be fair everybody that I've asked has said the same thing they, they all started the thing of oh <laughs> how do I ask yeah, like, ah. <laughs> and, yeah and it's just been the same thing it's just been oh it'd be so boring like yeah. how can, like think about it and I just think that shows like everybody has the same response so well it's like tv shows and movies yeah literally that, all fun, that falls under yeah this whole time like in lockdown what would you be doing like staring at a wall I'm just like, I'm so bored. Just twiddle thumbs as we sat there, like looking at the sky. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> so, how do you think that coronavirus has impacted the arts slash the creative industries? Negatively, positively, a little bit of both. I actually think a little bit of both. I I only say this from personal experience. Is without lockdown, I wouldn't have. I was meant to go to New York in May. And I got that money back from New York and completely upgraded what I edit on. I bought a massive PC. I used to just edit on a laptop, bought a PC with that money. And without lockdown and with all this happening, I wouldn't have been able to be in a position to afford that or put that much amount of money into it. Um, I completely changed my business. I was called Tom K Videography and strict only that and then changed it to Tom K Visuals in June last year. Um, again, without that, I wouldn't have been able to refocus and think, right, where am I taking this? Where do I want? I have all this free time now. Let's build it. Because I was in a transition of kind of building it. I only had like 200 followers last year. Well, not even a year ago. Um, like June. I had 200 followers on my, um, on my business account. Um, so for me personally, it's probably the best thing that's happened. <laughs> As obviously I know a lot of other people have suffered. Um, I'm in a fortunate position where I haven't. Um, but in that side of it, yes, positively, but in a bad side, very restricted on what you can do. Like I'm in a moment at the minute where I want to do loads of hotel shoots. I want to book hotels out, um, do that kind of lifestyle kind of shoot. And I can't do it at the minute. And it's like, I'm in a constant cycle of feeling unmotivated and motivated because I'm motivated to do it, but there's a physical wall in front of me to stop me from doing it. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I think, I think it's 50-50. I think without it, I wouldn't be in the position I am now. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think as well, in terms of being creative, 
it started off being like, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And I feel like because now we've sort of, as an industry, got used to it, I feel like ideas are coming out that you would never have thought of before. And I know it's pushed me to be creative and think outside the box on things. And I think one of the main like negative points of it is like the lack of funding for the sort of venues, like the music venues and things like that. But I think, like you said, like I'm in a better position because I've been able to save money. So like you said, like you can pay for more things like new lenses or new camera to shoot with. And I think, yeah, like I, I definitely think it's been 50, 50. For sure. A hundred percent. Um, it's, it's, uh, uh, the, you say about the music industry, that is probably the one field that has been shat on, like the, the nightclub industry, the festivals, any artists, like I can imagine that, like actually, like the one thing you can do and can't do it, that must be horrendous. Like, and I feel for those people like in the music, music industry, because that is savage. Yeah, definitely. And I think. I was actually speaking to um, someone the other day about it and we were saying the thing that's so interesting is they haven't given much funding to this sort of sector but then if you look at like the festival tickets like Reading and Leeds like how quickly it sold out Boomtown how quickly it sold out and it's like we're bouncing back before we've even come back and I feel like we're very much going to be like oh like you didn't you didn't stop us we're still going and it was quite interesting because I spoke to someone who would normally do performances and they um, were saying that they were in a position where they weren't getting any money because that's where they make their most money. And they said to me, they were like, to be honest, I just taught myself how to write music. I taught myself how to produce music and try to broaden my horizons. And they were like, it has been horrible, but in a way it's given time to perfect things that actually could make you money in the future. And that is the best thing people could have done is learn something new, like 100% learn, especially in that sort of area. I was going to say, did you, did you get a ticket for a festival? Did you manage to get one or? I didn't. I'm not going anywhere at the moment. <laughs> I'm praying that yeah. some of them stay around long enough, maybe like track or something stays around long enough for me to be able to get a ticket. But I'm not getting me I, uh, I managed to get a Reading ticket, Reading, Leeds, uh, Reading Festival ticket. Um, I was literally in and out of the queue for like five times and I literally looked on Twitter the next day and was like, oh my God, they sold out. And I was like, I was being so casual. I was thinking, should I go? Should I not go? And I was like, I'll get my money back or, and then I ended up getting a ticket. So I'm, I'm gassed about that. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be like last summer if, if everything goes to play. Oh, there's so many places I want to go to as well. There's just so many trips. I'm going to Lake District, um, Copenhagen in, in August. Just all, all this time has just made me realise that I want to, go out and actually see the world and not be sat in my bubble definitely and I think it's so exciting to see like you just know already how much new content's coming like after the 21st it's going to go from being like work from home to being like this crazy next level sort of I can't wait I at least can't wait at least put a smile on my face and like that I literally can't wait I know it's like as well that's why in the past couple of months since they've announced like the 21st of June I think a lot of uh, people's creative work is definitely like shot up because people are like excited and people are getting their passion back so like, I'm gonna be able to do it yeah so. and and they actually have an end date of like when they can aim to do this sort of stuff like before it was like in August are we still going to be in this or are we going to be out of it and now hopefully we'll be out of it yeah it's a sort of question what am I doing when's it going to end yeah yeah literally and I think that's what was killing most people is is the fact of not knowing when it was going to end it was such a but it's just a constant cycle. You think we're in the third lockdown now? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> it's crazy. It's mental. I think it's interesting as well, because I feel like we've learned how to work from home. So I think it'd be really interesting when people can go back to like studio and things like that. Like, are people going to prefer, actually, it's so much easier. You can do so much more from home than you think. I, I think a lot of businesses are going to stick with working from home. And especially with the cost of like renting offices and all that kind of things. I think people are going to be like, maybe we should just work from home. Maybe, maybe we've benefited from this and save money on, like, say, on rents and stuff. Yeah, it could end up being that, like, businesses just, like, instead of paying for, like, an office, they pay a little bit towards the people who work from Wi-Fi or whatever. Or, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. 
really interesting to see. And I think what's interesting is like there's sort of at the moment this move out of London as well with the whole whereas before everyone be like, oh my god, London's the place to be for like fashion, photography. And I feel like now especially people are really coming out of London because they're seeing like there is potential other places. And I know Manchester's really sort of taken off at the moment. So I think it's really interesting. Manchester's Manchester's mad at the minute. Like London, like I say, the, the transition between London and Manchester at the minute is massive. There is more creatives in Manchester than there is London now. I think it's just so interesting how like something like this can literally like flip everything. Shift. Up. Yeah, hundred percent. So, how do you look for opportunities within your industry? Oh, um, probably connecting with other photographers um and other businesses on instagram um often creating my own opportunities um just by being out there and uh being on the front foot i've been again fortunate enough where it's not what you know it's who you know so a lot of people like my mum's friends or my dad's friends have gone oh we have something that we want you to do and i'll do it and then they'll know someone and it's kind of a ripple effect um so yeah, it's, it's again fortunate enough people have come to me for stuff like through my website or come through instagram um so i think being consistent invites opportunities is probably how to word that definitely i think networking is probably the best sort of 100 best sort of tool to get get your name out there and get new opportunities so how do you how do you know that's not what i was trying to say where do you <laughs> In five years, I'll get there eventually. Oh, five years. Um, okay, there's there's two routes that I'd probably want to hopefully be down. Um, have my own house as a personal one. Have a studio in the house. Have a team of creatives, whether that be makeup artists, fashion designers, um, literally every creative have a team of them that we can spearhead campaigns for big brands and with that involving going to different countries traveling um and yeah just working with like even something like mercedes and you have a big group of people that like say does styling makeup all of that and mercedes gives a car and we're doing an advert for them but not necessarily like a standard car advert it would be like a lifestyle in the mercedes if that makes sense yeah um and you could do like hair products, makeup brands, um, watches, and with that become a travel photographer. So you have your trips paid for by brands and say, send me a watch. I'm going to Austria this weekend. Um, I'll shoot some promotional stuff for you. They'll pay you. That essentially pays for the trip. And that's kind of what I want to be doing in five years. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's the dream, isn't it? It's like... Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Exciting. And I think like you said and having a No go on you go. Oh no, I was gonna say yeah, I think it'd be so crazy like having people around you. The it oh, not necessarily all do the same thing, but just because they all everyone ha- will have different thought processes in depending on what like industry you're in. And I think having a group of creatives and just travelling together would be mental, would be amazing. Um and that's kind of what I'm like say building up for and then the end of the five years stay in this country and get a house and do all that boring stuff <laughs> yeah all the boring stuff. <laughs> all the adult stuff that i'm not ready for yet definitely yeah. <laughs> there's not a lot of that i am aware of like there's not a lot of like groups of people who constantly work together like i don't really know of a group that's a photographer a stylist like a designer an illustrator a graphic designer like i don't know of a group that collab on like everything together and i think that's maybe something that like could really take off and that, yeah, I really, like, I um, really, 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 really want to get a group of, like, even now, I'm because I, I don't want to tell people that that's kind of what I'm aiming to do, but I see people on Instagram and I think, oh, like, your, your stuff's quite cool. Your potential, like, I could try and potentially get you in or, like, other photographers. I met one uh, the other day and I was, like, potentially could get him involved. Um, and then when the moment's right, I literally just want to just go get everyone in and just go look i want to do this i have this brand that wants to do this and then hopefully everyone can come together and it'd be sick i think it's really interesting you could like market as a whole like all of you as a whole and i think 
how much easier is it to just go, okay, we've got everyone we need in one go. instead Yeah, of like, exactly. Oh. 100%. You could actually not have a team name, but have create a brand within you. And then all of you are freelancers on your own. So you all get your money separately. But for other brands, they know us as a name. Um, and that's just, I just, I, just, I love collaborating with people. I love seeing other people's creative processes. And I love, because I, I think that's when you get your best work because you can't do everything. Like as much as I turn up to a shoot and think I can take over the world, I need other people there. I need other people to look at styling. Like, because I'm focusing on the photography side of things. I want people to be like, oh, the outfit's not really going or maybe we should try this or makeup should be different or hair should be different. Like, and I'm more than like, I literally, again, it's annoying because COVID because I would do like smaller, I'd collab with multiple people instead of just meeting up with one person at the minute. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely what I want to do over, over the coming months for sure. Like, and I can't stress that enough. Like generally, it'll happen. <laughs> it sounds so exciting. Yeah, I can't wait. Do you feel like you're supported to get to your goal by the people around you, like your friends, your family? Um, yes, I 100% like people, um, uh, like especially my friends, they're massive. Like I do anything, they're commenting on it or they're sharing it or um, just giving me general feedback. And I want people to be like criticize me. I want people to be like, and that's not like that's not your best work because that's the, that's the only way you're going to grow i don't want yes men i don't want people going oh yeah that's quality that's quality that's quality because sometimes it's not like sometimes i've hit the i've missed it do you know what i mean um and my, my family are all, i say they're always supportive but they were skeptical of because i was building something good up with tom k videography they were skeptical when i want to change it to tom k visuals and they didn't really see even now like when i say stuff to them like oh, i want to do this this is the shot i want my mum's like can't really comprehend it in her head and then I'll show it to her and she'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you mean now, like, that's sick. Um, but I, I think that's good because it always means I have to prove myself. It's never just like, oh, that'd be good. And then they'll trust me, I have to like prove myself that I'm going to do it. Definitely. And I think as well, like, it's sort of, you've got that outside eye for someone who doesn't understand the process, but when they see the final product, they'll be able to say to you, oh, that's really good. Or, yeah, I like that. And you can- Yeah, it, you can gauge it for sure. Like, and it's like, it, you say like it's a different perspective it's i'm glad they don't do the photography and videography because they're seeing it from a normal eye like yeah. i could be i could edit a video and there's a bit in it that i think's like shaky or the colors a bit off but if they don't say anything and notice it nine times out of ten other people aren't going to notice it but because i've sat here for 10 hours looking at it i know it's there um okay. <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah I, th- I think it's good having having extra perspective and extra eyes on your work for sure it, like keeps you grounded it's that little bit of like sanity yeah definitely because i think you can get so caught up with people always commenting on your posts like um obviously i'm very ex- extremely grateful that people do interact with my posts but when people are constantly going yeah that's so good that's so good it's nice when someone isn't saying that and someone that almost means more to me when people yeah. are just like hmm like tweak that a little bit or as long as it's coming from the right place because some people are idiots and uh and then always saying it from a good intention they're saying it out of spite so yeah definitely yeah i think like you said yeah it's just nice and it takes a lot to say to somebody who's showing you their work oh you can change this so i think the fact yeah, it does they can is good for sure for sure, like it's even when I look at other people's work, you don't want to poop on it. You don't want to go, oh, that's not very good. Like you just have to say it in the right way. And as long as it, again, as long as it's coming from a good place, then it's, it's all right. Isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Sort of switching up the topic a little bit here. Have you seen the government retrain campaign? <laughs> yes. And I laughed when I saw it. Definitely. I was just like, this is so stupid when I saw it. What's your opinion on it? How, how that ever got through a group of people in a boardroom and thought that is a good idea is absolutely beyond me. And how it just shows the people that are actually doing it and doing these campaigns. Because like, someone would have to design that. And you're not telling me that designer who made it is going to have to redo their job. Do you know what I mean? Like they're, they're targeting themselves, whoever made that. Do you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, it's... Oh, but again, I, I think it was a bit, it depends on how, what age group you are. 
whether you agree with it or not, because I feel like the old the older generation were going, yeah, that's right. If you want to earn money, you're going to have to change your job. But then people that are actually in it and doing it were like, what are you talking about? Like, how can you tell anyone to change what they want to do? Like, they, you cannot do that. Definitely. And I think the way I saw it is I, I sort of felt a little bit like I was like, to be honest, you've tried to belittle the creative industry, but I think the only thing they achieved was making themselves look a little bit stupid. <laughs> And I think <laughs> they, 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 they've done that through this whole thing. Yeah. And everyone's just saying like, Darn. they just like, they just mocked it because what else is there to do? Like you can't take something like that seriously. And like you said, I was baffled. I was like, think how many people would have had to have said yes to that. And who made the decision and thought, yeah, this is such a great idea. Like, <laughs> and the person designing it, I'd love to know who that was. I would absolutely like it's so hypocritical like they're they're making something that is about them that's against them honestly like that doesn't make sense and it's even down to i'm pretty sure the photo that they used they didn't even ask it's not even their photo they asked they didn't ask a photographer (laughs) american photographer they took the photo it was originally like two ballerinas back to back and they just took the photo and cropped it and i'm just like how (laughs) how i didn't know they did that like, I think she came out and was just like, I don't want to be associated with this. This isn't my doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, it was a ballerina, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It just oh. gets, I'm just like, how stupid do you have to be? And that's sort of, to be fair, where this sort of project sparked from. Because I was just like, really? You're going to This country's run by idiots. Yeah, honestly. Honestly, yeah. yeah. As well with the, oh, retrain to gain money. It's sort of like, well, actually, people in this industry know that if you keep working at it eventually you're going to get there and it does pay pretty well once you like once you reach your goal you make definitely make a lot of money from it 100 percent. i think that's that's where the creative industry is a bit hit and miss because it, when people don't stay consistent with it and don't keep going it sucks but if you do keep going and you keep being consistent the rewards are massive like it's so fulfilling like uh, it's so fulfilling like i can't stress that enough like it's such a good feeling making like just making something from scratch or making someone feel a certain way or change like ex- expressing a mood or something like that like or inspiring other people like people have messaged me going um i'll keep up what you're doing it's really inspired me to go out and create and I, there's no better feeling than helping other people get better whilst doing it yourself if that makes sense yeah definitely i 100 percent agree with you so my final sort of question for today is what are your final thoughts and feelings on the treatment of the arts in this pandemic and also the sort of underfunding that has been given i think the underfunding is really bad i feel like but that has been the same with the hospitality industry, uh, the music industry. I feel like there's a lot of other sectors that have been underfunded as well as the creatives. Um, But I think because of that and because people have had to get up and go, it's helped a lot of people, not necessarily financially, but growing as a person, like we touched on earlier. I think everything happens for a reason. I'm a massive believer in that. And I think people would have well, again myself included grown massively because of it um because of the lack of support in a way people have decided to stand up on their own and like put everything they have into it so um so yeah i, I think the underfunding massively bad but growing as a person best thing that's happened definitely ever. it's like press to reset almost to like re- and rework how everything's sort of done yeah definitely it's it's you kind of reflect on what you were like before and you think like wow thank god that that's all happened because i couldn't imagine being in that position a year ago compared to now um so yeah well thank you for answering my question (laughs) you're very welcome it's a pleasure